Hi, I'm starting section 2 for today, which is multiplying real numbers. To start with multiplying real numbers, I want to go over properties. Um, I'm on page 89 of your book, properties of multiplication that you need to know. Okay? And the first property of multiplication that you need to know is the commutative property. Actually, I think you probably already know this property. Um, maybe not by name, but I'm, I know you've used it many a time. The commutative property of multiplication is what allows you to rearrange the order of multiplication and yet still get the correct answer. For example, 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. Well, if I rearrange it into 1 times 3 times 2, I still get 6. The commutative property is the property that allows me to rearrange, physically rearrange the order of my multiplication and still get the same answer. There is a second property of multiplication, somewhat related to the commutative property, but it's not exactly the same thing. It's the associative property. Now, the associative property is a property that allows me to multiply in a different order and still get the same answer. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, Didn't, isn't that what you did here? Well, what I did here is I physically rearranged the order of the numbers. The associative property simply says, I can multiply in a different order if I want to and still get the same answer. So you notice, I didn't physically rearrange anything, but I did multiply in a different order. Here, I'm going from left to right as I've been taught, a proper order of operations. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. Over here, you notice the order of the numbers didn't matter, but I did change how I multiplied the order of it. I said, okay, I'll use parentheses. I'm supposed to do 2 times 3 first, which is 6, and then I'll multiply 1. I still get 6. So I hope you can distinguish. Commutative is when you physically rearrange numbers in a different order of multiplication. Associative is when you don't physically rearrange the numbers, but you did multiply in a different order anyway. So typically by using parentheses. So those are the first two properties we have to um, be able to know, and we should know those. I will ask you to, fit, I will give you examples like, okay, what property is this on a test, and you'll have to be able to tell me. All right, a third property that we need to know is the identity property, and identity uh, or multiplicative identity. Identity means what can I multiply by to keep the number the same? Well. When you think about that, when you take any number and multiply by 1, you get the same number. So the identity property of multiplication is simply whenever you've taken a number and you multiply 1, you get the same number. So this property tells me if I multiply anything by 1, I get the same result. The multiplication property is 0. This property tells me if you ever multiply anything by 0, you get 0. So simply, this property is, is a simple one. Anything, any number times 0 is 0. And then there's also a property of negative, multiplication property of negative 1. And that property simply means whenever you take a number and you multiply by negative 1, you get the opposite of whatever number you started with. Okay, so a good example of that might be like 9 times negative 1. If I take 9 times negative 1, I get negative 9. I get the opposite of what I started with. Those are five properties that we have to know in regards to multiplication. They make our work easier. Okay? The second major important thing we have to be able to do, because I will make you do much of this without a calculator, is how do you tell if an answer is positive or negative when you multiply? So this was positive. This was supposed to be NEG negative when you multiply, okay? And I just always use three simple rules for that. If there's no negatives in the problem, the answer is obviously positive. You've done that your whole life. Any positive times a positive is a positive number. But now here's the next thing. If there are an odd amount of negatives in your multiplication problem, the answer is negative, okay? So, for example, let's do something simple like negative 2 times 3. 
I have one negative, one, that's an odd amount, one negative in the problem. I immediately know I get a negative answer, and all I got to do is take two times three, and I get negative six. If I multiply three numbers together, okay, I look here, I have one, two, three negatives in this problem. That's an odd amount. That automatically means my answer is negative. All I have to do now is take 2 times 3 times 1, that's 6, I get negative 6. There's an odd amount of negatives in your multiplication problem, that's a negative answer. However, if you have an even amount of negatives in your multiplication problem, the answer is positive. So, if I go back to what I just wrote here and I just erase this negative sign there, well, wait a minute now, I, I have three numbers, but only two an even number are negative, this suddenly becomes a positive answer now. This would be positive 6. So they're pretty simple rules. I've always just taught it that way because when you look at your homework, sometimes you are multiplying more than th two numbers together, okay? Like if you look at number 12. If you look at number 12 and I'm asking you to take half, times uh, negative 20 times negative 3. Well, the first thing I notice is I have two negatives in the problem. That's an even amount of negatives. I automatically know already my answer is positive. All I got to do now is take half times 20. Well, half of 20 is 10, and 10 times 3 is 30. I know the answer is 30. There's two negatives. It's an even amount. Just multiply the stuff together. Okay? Or if you took a problem like number 18, 18, we have negative 3 quarter times 1 third, I'm sorry, negative 1 third times negative 8 ninths. Okay, well, the first thing I notice is I have 1, 2, 3 negatives being multiplied together. Well, I know right now the answer is negative. I don't have to worry about the signs anymore. I already know the answer is negative. All I got to do is multiply. Now, we talked about this during earlier this year. When you're multiplying, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, okay, I would not do this. I'm not going to say it's wrong, but I don't think this is the best way. Some of you are going to do 3 times 1 times 8 and get 24. And you're going to take 4 times 3, which is 12, times 8, which is 108. And then you're going to try to reduce that. I don't think that's the easiest thing to do because, remember, you're not going to use a calculator. You know, I, I teach this stuff, and I'm pretty good at my mental math. Some of you struggle more than I just did there. Well, you're not making it easy if you do that. Here's what I would recommend. I would not just do that. I, remember we talked about this. Whenever you're multiplying fractions, common factors on the top will always cancel common factors on the bottom. So let's take a look here. I noticed some common factors here and here. I can divide 3 by 3 and get 1, and I can divide 3 down here by 1. I misspoke. 3 by 3, I meant, and got 1. I can divide both these by 3. I see another pairing like that, here and here. Can't I divide both of those by 4? 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. Well, now on the new, in the numerator, I have 1, 1, and 2, and in the denominator, I have 1, 1, and 9. Well, this is a heck of a lot easier to do, and I've already reduced it. 2 and 9 have no common factors. 1 times 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 times 9 is 9. I have negative 2 ninths, and it's already been reduced for me. You'll notice in numbers 19 to 27, they will ask you to identify the property illustrated. I'm asking you to just tell me what kind of property or what property that is. Like in number 19, that has to be the multiplication property is zero. I'm taking anything times zero is zero. There's an example of that. In 28 to 36, they're going to ask me to find the product. They want me to justify my steps. Okay, so in 28... Okay, um, my product, let me just write this down. And let me tell you what I did in my head. I went ahead and I did this first. 
what allows me to multiply this out first? What, which one of my five properties? What I just did in my head is I said, okay, I'm going to do this first. Isn't that the associative property? So I just used the associative property here. If I spelled that right, associative, no I didn't, associative property. I just did that property first, and this here is 16. So I have y times 16. Well, I'm going to write down, instead of y times, I'm going to put 16y. Well, what allows me to switch these around? Well, I just did the commutative property of multiplication. So I used two properties in 28. I did these two first and got 16. I knew y times 16 was 16y. What allowed me to switch those around? The commutative property. That would be an example of that. Okay? Um, <coughs> I'll also, I believe I have a worksheet that goes with this regarding um, working with absolute values too uh, to get better practice regarding those. I see a few absolute value questions in evaluating on 37 to 42. I believe I have a worksheet that is part of this. Uh, actually, no, that was, I, I did that with you guys earlier. So we, okay, we're all set on that too. Okay, so um, that's the end of this video for today.